Hello, this is Rachel Oakes and my business partner Claire Colbert from Family Mediation and Mentoring. And we're really pleased that we're able to speak with Zara Pabani from Erwin Mitchell, who is a specialist family lawyer and has been for 20 years. So uh, Zara definitely knows an awful lot about family law and how to support clients through the process. And the reason we particularly wanted to speak with Zara, because Erwin Mitchell are doing some exciting new things in the field of supporting clients with mediation and other dispute resolution options as well. And so, Zara, could you just tell us about the type of cases that you refer to mediation and the other dispute resolution options that you recommend? So yes, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. In terms of what we refer to mediation and other dispute resolution organisations, it can be any family dispute, to be honest. So whether it be divorce, children, finances, we believe that clients should have choices. These are major factors in our clients' lives and they need options. They need to decide what works best for them and their family. And we firmly believe that every client should understand that they could consider mediation, collaborative law, arbitration to help resolve their family matter. That's brilliant. I was, I was really interested when I was reading um, the information on your website, Zara, about the way you prepare clients for mediation. Could you tell us a bit about how you do that? Yeah, sure. I mean, some clients come to us and either they're considering mediation or mediation has been put to them by their ex-partner and they can feel vulnerable, scared, nervous, even though they've read about it, even though perhaps they've had the first call with the mediator, they're still feeling very unsure. So what we do is spend time with them to explain to them the process. And then probably in the week running up to mediation, we will have perhaps what I term a coaching session with them. And we go through their circumstances. So if it's divorce, children and finances, we talk to them about what divorce proceedings can look like. We talk to them about their finances and help prepare them for the disclosure exercise that we know that you will do with them in mediation so we get them thinking about their income and their assets what is an asset what's going to be relevant their property the values so they can start making a list and that these issues and terms are not going to be new to them the other thing we do is we sometimes put together a crib sheet some questions that they might like to ask some statements they like, might like to make so for example if they're feeling really nervous and it's been really tense in the lead up to this first mediation session, we might say to them, well, why don't you go in? And when somebody speaks to you or asks you a first question, why don't you say, before we start, please, can I just say that I'm really pleased we're here today? I'm feeling a bit nervous and scared, but we've got kids and this to work because I think it'll be really beneficial for the kids and for us. And at the end of the day, we've been married a long time and these kids are a credit to both of us. So I'm here and I'm really hopeful and feeling positive that we're going to start talking. And, I bet, and that's really powerful as a mediator hearing that. It makes a huge difference when someone makes a statement like that. Uh, absolutely, because I do believe and the feedback that we get is that it changes the energy in the room and it really starts everybody on a positive footing. And if you're going to go into dispute resolution environment, you have to go with some level of positivity. And just making a statement like that can really open up the discussion absolutely that sounds i mean that sounds really interesting i mean do people ask you how they should prepare or very practical things about coming to the mediation meetings are it's always really interesting to hear it from your side they do you know we would tell them literally what to wear um how to have their room and their environment uh whether to use headphones or not if it's virtual have a notepad and pen, the crib sheet that I talked about earlier, have that with them. We'll say it's absolutely fine to refer to notes and it's absolutely fine to say, can I just look down my list of things to see if I've missed anything that I wanted to say or ask? So from everything really, it, it, to make sure they have a drink of water next to them, what time of day is better for them? What time of day is quieter? Um, you know, if they're gonna wake up and feel really, really anxious first thing, they don't do it first thing, have a cup of tea. Maybe have another chat with us. We have a chat with clients in the morning or the night before the mediation just to help calm their nerves. 
And perhaps what we do with them sometimes as well is ask them a few questions, like we believe or we understand that what you would ask them. So really to prepare them for the environment as a whole. It, it really does sound that you are supporting clients really well in the mediation process. How often do they stay in touch with you whilst they're going through the process? Let's say with us, if we're if we're working with them, do they stay in touch fairly regularly, Sarah? So it's entirely up to the client. But yes, to be honest, because we provide this mediation support system, we will hear from them before mediation and then we'll speak to them, as I said, the night before or on the morning. And then immediately after we suggest to them if that's what they want to do while it's fresh in their minds to email us, to give us a call or to have a meeting to tell us how they feel. How did it go? What happened? And then if there are some notes or what I term as homework from the mediation session, we go through it with them and help them. We often help them prepare that homework and we might even look at it before they submit it to you. So if it is disclosure or some notes or some things they've had to pull together, we might go through it with them and say, yeah, that looks really good. Or maybe you've missed this or maybe you need to look at some more property particulars or actually that's not quite the document they'll need. They'll need something more than that. And so and then when they go to the next mediation session, we might have another little coaching session with some points to discuss, some challenges, some statements to make. So we can do it throughout the mediation. We act almost like a, a legal consultant in the background. Which I think you've just partly answered my next question, Zara, there. So one of the things that we wanted to know is how you think lawyers and mediators can best work together to support the clients. Well, I think you've just touched on that, haven't you? To be honest, Claire, I think there's a better way for us to do it, because I'm going to be really honest with you. To date, predominantly, we do sit in the background and mm -hmm. clients found it hugely beneficial. But I think there's a better way forward. And looking at what you and your company are doing right now, I think you're opening that door, really, whereby for lawyers to have a little bit more input. So let me give you an example. The client might say something to us after mediation and there might be a note, but it might not all make sense because we weren't in the room. So we might, the lawyer might actually get it wrong and take the client down a different path that is inappropriate. So for us to be in the room or perhaps in some direct form of communication with you guys, well, then there's less chance of there being any misunderstanding. And it can be a bit more of a seamless process rather than it being us understanding what the client is saying and us trying to understand perhaps sometimes the note. So, yes, I think there's a better way to do it, which we're really excited to work with you on that. So, so that's looking at the hybrid route that we've talked to you about in the past, where lawyers can be involved in the process, can be part of the meetings and can be there to be giving advice and assistance during the meeting, but in a separate room from the other party and their lawyer. Absolutely. And you know what? We, we know that this happens all the time, doesn't it, in commercial mm. mediations. So why not in a family mediation? Your clients may feel more empowered, more comfortable. Mm. And actually, it might even move the process a bit quicker sometimes we say to clients if you're not sure then say I'm not sure and if you feel like you don't know the right question to ask say I need some time to think about it or say I really want to take some advice on that well if the advice is in the next room on the same day at the same time and it, we could just unblock something for them really quickly and easily then it can move forward immediately I think it's such a positive and powerful thing that could happen so you know we're really excited at looking at that with you yeah, I mean, certainly Claire and I are really keen to try and ensure that we don't have this world of mediation sitting on one side and then the lawyers sitting on the other. I think that the better way forward is for there to be a real team approach to support clients reach agreements. If they're saying to us, we'd like to reach an agreement and we don't want to go to court, how do we do it? Then, you know, uh, lawyers and mediators working together, that's something that we really support, that we're really trying to um, promote. Do, do you think lawyers at the moment kind of understand and get the whole hybrid mediation model, Sarah? I think some lawyers do. Not everybody does yet. But that's an education piece for the lawyers, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, as well as for the clients. This is a whole new world. It's a different way of doing things. So we all need educating. I think there's some lawyers out there who are going to massively embrace this and other lawyers that might be a little bit reticent. But that's just an education piece. So for us as well at Irwin Mitchell, we've been going on this journey of looking at different ways to resolve issues for clients. And what we've done is we've invited other lawyers to come talk with us, to come onto 
webinars and podcasts and really to share views with us because what we want to show the clients is that lawyers can work together mm. with mediators with them as you say Rachel as a team but the team can involve lawyers on both sides as well as a mediator as well as both clients the team should be a wider approach not just one team over here and one team over there so I think it'll take a while for lawyers and clients to really get on board completely but isn't it exciting and it's absolutely it's going, it's going back to giving clients the option mm. and that's got to be Yes, and, and making sure they've got the choices and they make those choices. And it's been really interesting this evening to understand more about how you and your team at Irwin Mitchell are supporting people through the mediation process. I actually think, Zara, that that is groundbreaking. And I really hope that other lawyers uh, pick up on what you're doing and engage in a similar type of of process. So thank you very much for your time. You. It's been really nice to to speak with you and no doubt we will speak again soon thank you thank you thank you